Being physically fit allows you to properly support the Air Force mission. The Air Force Fitness Assessment is a tool to assist in the determination of your overall fitness and consists of three components, body composition, aerobic fitness, and muscular fitness. The fitness assessment takes place in the fitness assessment cell, or FAC. Where a FAC is not available, unit commanders may designate an alternate location. Also, members taking their assessment must wear the official PT uniform. Body composition will be the first component assessed and is composed of height, weight, and abdominal circumference measurements. Height and weight measurements are obtained to satisfy DOD requirements. However, they are not factored into the composite score because unlike the abdominal circumference measurement, they do not indicate where body fat is stored. Height and weight measurements will be taken at the start of the assessment in accordance with the procedures outlined in Air Force Instruction 36-2905. The abdominal circumference measurement is an assessment of body composition and counts for 20% of your overall composite score. Height, weight, body mass index, and percent body fat provide body composition information, but they do not determine body fat distribution or regional body fat. Visceral fat or fat stored in the internal abdominal region is highly related to several health problems such as diabetes and cardiovascular disease. After computerized axial tomography, unrealistic for measuring the total force, Abdominal circumference is the best simple measure of this high-risk abdominal fat and related health risks. You will stand on a flat surface with your feet no more than shoulder width apart. Your head should be horizontal, looking directly forward, your chin parallel with the floor. The assessor will start the measurement on your right side. The assessor will locate the measurement landmark immediately above your right uppermost hip bone at the side of your body, vertically in line with your right armpit, the mid-axillary line. If desired, you may assist the assessor in locating the measurement landmark by resting your right hand on your hip with your right thumb pointing to the rear immediately above your uppermost hip bone, the superior border of your iliac crest. The assessor will determine the final horizontal vertical intersection point for landmark confirmation. You will adjust your shirt out of the way of the measurement. You will remain stationary while the assessor conducts the measurement by initially moving around you to place the tape in a horizontal plane around your abdomen. You may use one hand to initially assist the assessor in anchoring the tape measure to your body, but you must remove your hand from the tape before the official measurement is recorded. You may use your free hand to hold your shirt out of the way, but you may not extend your hands or arms above the shoulders. The assessor will take the measurement on your bare skin. He will ensure the tape is parallel to the floor at the level of the landmark. The bottom edge of the tape just contacts the landmark. The assessor ensures the tape is snug, but does not compress the skin. The assessor will take the measurement at the end of your normal exhalation. The measurement will be taken and recorded three times, rounding down to the nearest half inch. If there is more than one inch difference between the measurements, a fourth measurement will be taken. Then the sum of the three closest measurements is divided by three and rounded down to the nearest half inch. This value will be recorded as your abdominal circumference measurement. Assessors conducting this measurement should be the same gender as the member. When an assessor of the same gender is not available, an observer of the same gender must be present. For you assessors out there, here are some improper techniques to avoid. Don't pull the tape too tight or allow it to be too loose as this will render an incorrect measurement. If the tape is not parallel, you'll get an incorrect measurement. And if the tape is placed too high above the landmark, 
the superior border of the iliac crest at the mid axillary line or too low, you will also get an incorrect measurement. Unless medically exempt, all members will complete the 1.5 mile run as the aerobic component of the fitness assessment. The 1.5 mile run is used to measure cardiorespiratory fitness. You may warm up prior to beginning the run. When you are ready, line up behind the starting line. The assessor will tell you when to begin with the start of a stopwatch. You may have someone pace you while you run, but there may be no physical assistance and you are required to stay on the course. Violating these requirements will result in termination of the test. Your completion time will be recorded when you cross the finish line. If you are medically exempt from the 1.5 mile run, the one mile walk is the only approved alternate aerobic assessment. You are required to walk one mile as quickly as possible. You must walk, not run, keeping at least one foot in contact with the ground at all times. Your heart rate will be recorded immediately upon completion of the mile by reading the value from a heart rate monitor. The muscular fitness component consists of a one minute timed push up and a one minute timed sit up. Let's take a look at the push up. Place your palms or fists on the floor, hands slightly wider than shoulder width apart, with your elbows fully extended. Your feet may be no more than 12 inches apart and should not be supported, braced, or crossed. Your body should maintain this rigid head to heel form. This is the up position. Begin by lowering your body to the ground until your upper arms are at least parallel to the floor, elbows bent at at least 90 degrees. Your chest may touch, but not rest on or bounce off the floor. The push-up is completed by returning to the start position with your elbows fully extended, but not locked, as this could cause injury. This is one repetition. Resting can only be done in the up position. You may remove your hands or feet from the floor or bridge or bow your back, but only in this up rest position. If you rest in the down position, the test will be terminated. One, two, the correct number three, of push-ups will be four, counted out loud. Five, Incorrect push-ups will not be counted seven, and you will be told what eight, you are doing wrong. Not low enough, sir. Eight. Not low enough, sir. Eight. And the number of the last nine, correct push-up will ten, be repeated. Eleven. Twelve. Here are some incorrect procedures to avoid. Allowing your back to arch during the push-up. Not going down until your upper arms are parallel with the floor. Not fully extending your elbows when completing the repetition. Failing to maintain the rigid head to heel form. The sit up is the other component of the muscular fitness assessment. And like the push up, you will have one minute to complete as many correct sit ups as possible. Begin by laying face up on the floor or mat. Your feet may extend off the mat, but your buttocks, shoulders, and head must not extend beyond the mat. Bend your knees at 90 degrees with your feet or heels in contact with the floor at all times. Cross your arms over your chest with your hands or fingers at your shoulders, resting on your upper chest. Raise your upper torso until your elbows touch your knees or thighs. Then, lower your upper torso until your shoulder blades contact the floor. This is one repetition. Your elbows must touch your knees or thighs at the top of the sit-up, and your shoulder blades must contact the floor or mat at the bottom of the sit-up, keeping any part of your hands or fingers in contact with your shoulders or upper chest at all times. Are you ready? Begin. You have one minute to perform one, as many correct sit-ups as two, possible. The correct three, number of repetitions four, will be counted out loud. Five, 41, 
incorrect okay, sit-ups will not be counted, counted and you will be told what you are doing wrong. The number of the last correct sit-up will be repeated. The total number of correct sit-ups in one minute is recorded as your score. You may request the assessor to hold your feet with his hands or by putting his knees on your feet, but he may not anchor you by holding your calves. Additionally, he may not stand on your feet during the assessment as he could lose his balance and step off, causing you to lose a rep. Please note you may request a member of the same gender to hold your feet, and that request must be granted. You may use an anchored toe hold bar where available, so long as your heels remain in contact with the ground at all times and the bar cannot move. Here are some incorrect procedures to avoid. Elbows not touching your knees or thighs at the top of the sit-up. Shoulder blades not contacting the floor or mat at the bottom of the sit-up. Hands or fingers completely breaking contact with the shoulders or upper chest. Grabbing onto your shirt. This does not assist in performing the sit-up and it makes it difficult to determine if you are maintaining proper contact. And lastly, lifting your buttocks off the floor. Once you've completed the assessment, you will be asked to review your scores and acknowledge the component's results by signing the hard copy score sheet. It is important to note that FACS will supervise members conducting push-ups, sit-ups, and the one and a half mile run at a ratio of no more than 12 members for every one FACS staff member. When multiple airmen are testing, they will pair off and count for each other while the FAC member provides oversight to ensure proper form. As stated earlier, performing exercises with proper form is extremely important for preventing injury. Also, gradual increases in exercise frequency and intensity are equally important. Over or under exertion will not produce desired results. The Air Force Fitness Program aims to promote a year-long fitness culture. Physical fitness positively affects our airmen's personal health and wellness and directly impacts combat readiness and war fighting capability. We wish you success as you strive to improve your physical fitness, health, and ability to serve as a warrior airman in the world's greatest Air Force. Aim high, fly, fight, win. Thank you.